Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Absolutely Not Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McMahon. How the hell are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great day, great life, great week. Um, I'm on a steroid pack. Don't know when the last time you get a steroid shot up the ass, but I'll tell you what. You know, I fucks with an urgent care. Shout out to Dr. Duke. Um, I love an urgent care. I don't have a primary care physician, which I know is very, <clears throat> it's a uh, dramatic for a lot of people. People get upset that I don't have a PCP, but I live my life on the edge. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a bad girl at urgent care. Um, so I went, got a little sinus thing going on, but I got a little Z pack, your girl fucks with the Z pack. And I got a little, um, steroid shot in the ass. And let me tell you something, when that steroid shot hits, you know, when it hits, it's a couple hours in, you have to make your, you like, e- <laughs> as soon as it hits, you're like, Zing! and you were fucking ready to go. I am so good on a steroid. I could, uh, move you out of your home, put together a trundle bed with my teeth and then help you file for a divorce and do all the paperwork. Like I could literally do the hearings. I could show up, uh, for, I don't know, uh, your taxes. I could prank phone call the IRS. I could get your kids into boarding school. Um, I could absolutely be chief of staff for somebody in the white house. Uh, what else could I do? I could take an online safety course for cross country trucking. Um, I could learn how to make meth because essentially that's what a steroid is. And on top of that, I could, I don't know, hug the barefoot Contessa. Those are all things I can do on a steroid shot. I'm not even on the pills. I'm not even on the loose pills. I'm on the shot. And I told my doctor at the urgent care, I said, listen, I don't have time. I don't have time to do the 45 days of pills. Hit me right. Hit me right above the L7, below the L7, right in the ass. And, uh, you know, usually I roll up the arm, but he said, nah, it's better in the ass. But I'm telling you right now, I'm zip, zap, zopping. Okay. I don't want to be because I feel like a bag of dicks, but I could rollerblade to the mall, uh, go back in time, hit limited to, rebuild limited to, rebuild the store, the brand from scratch, I could literally somehow transport myself mentally and physically somewhere across seas where they probably made all the clothes for limited to. And I could create the the entire SKUs by hand. And then I could bring it back to America and relaunch the brand. And I'd say 24 hours because that's how speedball-y I feel right now on my steroid shot. I get it. Like I understand why bodybuilders get yoked. I get it. They're out in the parking lot in their Honda Accord just wolfing down fucking, you know, celery juice and hard boiled eggs and drinking goat's milk. And then they fucking sniff their steroids like an eight ball of cocaine. And then they go in and they're, you know, dead pressing or what do you call it? Deadlifting, French pressing. They're French pressing the shit out of some heavy weights. Yeah, we all could do that. I could be in Miss America bodybuild tomorrow. If you kept me jacked up on the roids, gave me a bunch of egg whites, and let me French press the shit out of a couple two hundos. I'm speaking in riddles now. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Long story short is though, being in the Hamptons, I got back last night. Being in the Hamptons made me ill. It is too much old money with just the right amount of new money. I'm more of a new money bitch. Y'all know this. Um, but that is particularly it is a little too old money. And when I'm around old money, it's a little dusty. It's a little crusty. A lot of cardigans, a lot of people wearing minimal makeup. You know, people in the Hamptons don't like to wear a lot of color. It's very much so I'm wearing creams. I'm wearing macrame. I'm wearing crocheted tops. Uh, It's not enough neon. It's not enough Panama City bright orange hot pink for my taste. I had a great time. I had a classy time. But I will also tell you about the probably one of the most soul sucking moments of my life when I had to try and get into the surf lodge. Give me 30 seconds on this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta get some lip gloss. Lips are. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys. Oh, all right. Hold on. I had to readjust, readjust, got some gloss. Lips are dry and we're back in three two, one. Anywho. Okay. So here's the deal. You know, I said earlier on the podcast a couple weeks ago that this was a summer of fun. Your girl, once she gets through this first, 
<laughs> this first sign is affection. I'm going to be so fun. I'm going to be so fun. I'm going to be taking my tops off at the bar. And Raymond called me today and he was like, you know what, Heather? I know that you got a little ill in the Hamptons, but regardless, you said this is going to be your year of your summer of fun. And so far, it's a summer of you hit a peak after Radio City and now you're turning into an old lady again. And I'm not letting that happen. So I'm here to let you all know this is the summer of fun. But one of the things that was required of me for the summer of fun is to get into one of the most exclusive clubs in the Hampton. This place called the Surf Lodge. Now, I realized that me essentially confessing what happened at the Surf Lodge will ultimately probably get me blacklisted from there. Lovely people. But when I tell you, you pull up to this place in Montauk, and I don't know why for it being called the Surf Lodge, I thought it was going to be right on the Atlantic. It's on the pond side, the bay side. Okay. And you basically pull up to like an old outdoor motel. And you know, it's a motel when the doors open from the outside, right? And in, a hotel is anything where it's enclosed, where you don't see the door to your room. A motel is anywhere where any, you know, yeah, everyday Joe could just walk up and just pop, pop, pop open the door. So we roll up and I'm like, okay, cute, kitschy. It's all white. I get it. It's a vibe, but I have no idea what's on the other side of this rope. All right. This, <laughs> and it's not a red velvet rope that you'd see at a cool Hollywood club. No, no, no. We're in Montauk. So of course it is a, like a woven, like a knot, like a sailor's knot, uh, which I respected and appreciated because, you know, when I get a boat, not if, but when I get a boat, the name of the boat will be absolutely not. Actually, speaking of which, speaking of which, let me put my captain hat on for the rest of this. So uh, a lovely fan made this for me. If you can't see this, if you're not watching this on the YouTubes, it says absolutely not K-N-O-T would be the name of my mega yacht. I've put it on the vision board. It's going to happen. I can't wait to sail the friendly seas. Uh, well, not friendly right now. We'll get in the into the Titanic in a second. But regardless, I love puns. I love themed things. And I love every time I watch Below Deck that there's always a themed party. Okay, so I'm fucking here for it. Long story short we roll up and they've got you know a very nautical themed red carpet okay you're walking up it's gravel it's at those pebbles there's no like carpet down but that that velvet rope if you will is woven uh a sea string let's call it that and i'm like okay i'm already loving the theme i'm already loving the theme and i start looking around and every hoe at this fucking party who's walking in is maybe a size two and they all have on like short denim skirts crocheted tops, titties, nipples out, tits to the sky and minimal makeup, like very Gigi Hadid and tiny little baby bags, like tiny little baby bird purses. If you were ever going to, I don't know, rescue a parakeet and you wanted her, her or him to be fashionable, you would get them the purses that these girls were wearing. Okay. And probably the outfits. Some of these tops were not tops. Some of them were just tampon strings that were draped across their bodies. And I found that very refreshing. Okay. Now I want y'all to know I am wearing an actual, very authentic diamond necklace right now. And I wore that to the surf lodge just because I wanted the people working the red carpet and, or the door, uh, you know, again, the, the absolutely not uh, line. I wanted them to know that I was coming in with jewels. Uh, I was a woman of new wealth. I, you know, if, if they had to swipe my Amex at the end of the night for the amount of greyhounds and spicy margaritas I was going to drink, it would just kind of signal to the door guy, hey, I can afford it. Okay. Um, this was a wedding gift for my husband. And I just wanted, I thought that if I came in with the real stuff instead of the cocktail stuff, they could smell out, sniff out. I, I was one of the ones who could, you know, afford the crab claws. So we roll up. We had preemptively, our friend had made a dinner reservation, like a 5 p.m. dinner reservation on a Friday so we could get in. All right. Just because I didn't, even though my agent, like my agent got involved, they made sure we were on a list. Yada, yada, yada. And I had seen on TikTok and Instagram people talking about how savage the people who run the surf lodge are. And y'all, this is iconic Montauk. This is iconic. We're in the Hamptons. This is the place you go. It's at the end of the fucking world. It's all the way out east. But if you want to be seen and, and be where the DJs are and do the thing that the kids do and be fucking fun for the summer, because you got to be fun. Remember, I got to be fun for the summer. Demi Lovato once said, cool for the summer. You know, I can't stand her. So I'm being fun for the summer. Damn it. Um, I said, I'm going to go. So we roll up and I go to the main, the main gal who's letting people in just to like the bar club DJ area. Okay. It's 445 on a fucking Friday. 
it's already bumping. Okay. And I can already tell, I look at Jeff, I clock Jeff and I said, it's loud. You know, it's loud. I know it's loud. It's loud. And he goes, we can't let our friends know. We think it's loud. Right. Cause I'm fun. I'm freaking fun. <laughs> so we go to the woman and I say, Hey, uh, five people under my name, McMahon, Heather. And she doesn't even, does not even look on the pad, does not even look on the, the clipboard and just goes, we don't have it. And I said, Oh, uh, UTA, that's my agent. Okay. United talent agency. I said, UTA, I think they called and she paused for a second. Cause she's like, all right, at least she's saying a legitimate agent, you know, but I could have been like old McDonald, you know, that agency, that talent agency, they put me on the list and it probably would have fared better. Okay. And I'm in a very, very powerful, reputable agent. <laughs> so She's like, all right, gives me the time of day. Look, she's like, you're not on the list. You're not on the list. Now, didn't never made eye contact. Uh, I could feel, though, her spirit go into my spirit, go through my body, through my, you know, lightly lined linen dress from Reformation. And I could feel a dark energy trying to pull the light of the Lord out of my physical being so that she could suck it into hers. Because I know that this young woman who couldn't have been more attractive, I know that that's that's how she lives her life. I know that she might be a white witch. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just felt like there was a spirit telling me she's going to try and steal your joy. And the way she steals your joy is by saying no, no. So I'm like, all right, this isn't working. So Tina rolls up and she's like, yes. And she, and Tina's been on an email with like six agents and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good for the DJ or <laughs> whatever. Cause here's the thing. We had to get the wristbands because the wristbands let you get basically on the, uh, I'll say the patio floor. Okay. So even if you're dining on the left side of the, of the venue, you got to get down to the patio floor where all the cool kids are vaping and listen to the DJs. All right. Water break. So long story short, my buddy Jimmy's like, no, 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 don't worry. I also made a dinner reservation. That's how we'll get through. We'll call your agent, see what happened, why, why we're not on the list. So we go and we sit down and they're like, there's five of you. Well, we only have a table for four, so you're gonna have to squeeze. So it's myself, Christina and Jimmy on one. We're on we're, when I say we are sandwiched, we are sandwiched in between three tables. OK, you're like, Heather, how can you be sandwiched in between three tables? We're sandwiched and we got a two top on our right. We got a two top on our left. And there is nothing more embarrassing, especially in New York. OK, and I get it. Square footage is expensive that, you know, if you've ever been into a New York City restaurant and you got to get on the banquette side, the booth side, you got they got to pull out the table, you got to slide in and then they slide the table back in. Right. Well, there's three of us. OK, the, the tables are so fucking tight at this goddamn surf lodge. All right. I don't know if surfers like to be close and intimate, but the tables are tight. So the three of us are squeezing in on a, a where a two top should be. And then Jeff and Ray daddy are sitting across from us. Well, we're looking at the menu. I don't want the hamachi. I love hamachi, but it's four o'clock. We only made this reservation so that we could eventually end up on the patio fucking floor with the DJ. So I'm, I heard the chicken fingers were epic. So the lady comes by. Couldn't have been nicer, though. The lady who um, who was waiting on us. I said, listen, bitch, you got the chicken tenders. She said they're off menu. How many you want? And everyone was like, we'll take one. I said, we'll take six. Six, six platters. Cause I know you people I'm over here having two spicy margaritas. You're all going to be 75 Moscow mules deep. And you're going to be wishing that you had the chicken tenders. So you had something to coat the throat. Cause I know what's going to happen. You're all going to be vaping and sucking dick in about an hour. And instead of coating the stomach, you got to coat the throat. You got to coat the throat when you're partying hard with the cool kids. Okay. So we order all these chicken tenders and the, the girlies next to us are having like oysters. You know, it's a very low, it's a, it's a, just have two oysters at the bottom of the stomach. And then we're going to vape all night and do mushrooms. So don't worry. We don't need a lot of food. Well, I'm fucking starving. Okay. And I know I'm probably gonna have to fight with the lady behind this woven fisherman's rope here in about 30 minutes after this meal is done. So the first drink comes out. I order like a, a skinny, spicy margarita. I don't know what the fuck was in this thing. It was a, I, as soon as I taste it, I go, it's got weed. Sure enough, they got a CBD thing on the damn menu. So I'm like, now grandma's getting high as a fucking kite at this place. All right. So these girls next to us, I'm laughing so hard because, you know, it, we're all like well-established, hardworking people at this table who all have some sort of Amex that I guess could swipe. I mean, I'm sure there's one of us in the group whose credit card will get declined, but I was like, God damn it. We are here. We are fun. We are being fun and we're having fun and we're smiling and we're smiling. And I said, I'll be damned if we don't get led into this fucking club. So we're sitting next door. So again, I want to paint the picture. The cool kids are down on the patio. 
All right. The lower level, which you can see from eye level down by the DJs, all packed in like sardines. And I'm in like the cozy restaurant that really, I mean, I'd say if fire department came in, could seat 10. There's about 45 of us in here. All trying to or- order bottles of champagne. So that in hopes that the lady who's working the front will do a loop through the restaurant and see people who are spending money and then be like, hey, guys, I actually did see your name on the list. (laughs) So at this point, I've had about two spicy margaritas. The acid reflux kicking in. I'm coating the throat because I know I probably got to blow Jeff when I get home. And I'm just wolfing down chicken tenders. I'm getting a little tipsy. So I decide to make an announcement to the entire restaurant at 515 on a Friday in Montauk at the Surf Lodge. I decide to make an, an announcement and I just yell, hi, everyone. I'm Heather McMahon. And I want y'all to know that I'm absolutely can afford to be here. And I am renting a boat for my husband's birthday in Croatia in September. It is not peak season. It is off season. But I want y'all to know that I can't afford that. <laughs> and I swear to God, these porn stars who are sitting at like a four top in front of us just turn around. They're like, that's fat. That's fantastic. They were like German porn stars. They're like, congratulations, off peak. Very reasonable and sensible of you. And these girls all had the biggest fake titties, biggest fake titties. And they weren't wearing much more than like, I'd say saran wrap and a Publix shopping bag, you know, for, for an outfit. And they're like, very good of you. Croatia, actually the best time to go there is in September. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, where are you guys from? They're like, we're from Hamburg. We're all Victoria's Secret models, but we're here. We also did the OnlyFans because Victoria's Secret started letting fat people model for them. So now we do the OnlyFans too because I ah, can't be bothered with the fat people. And I literally had this moment where I was like, this is exactly where I need to be. I'm with the, the Victoria's Secret models from Hamburg, Germany, turned OnlyFans, porn stars with the fake titties and the public shopping bags. And uh, they're encouraging me. They're all telling me it's a really great financial and and tr- great travel decision to go to Croatia in September. We're going to do that. We're doing a little Croatia trip before um, before we go to Italy for the Ryder Cup. <laughs> so anyways, and of course, Tina and Ray and Jimmy and Jeff are like, shut the fuck up. Why are you announcing this? I'm like, just everyone. And then I just started speaking in a German accent the rest of the evening. So I'm like, so everyone just remember, I'm getting a boat in Croatia, small yacht, not a yacht for eight people, just for me and my husband, because there's only the two of us traveling for his birthday. And we're getting it out of Croatia. Anyone going to be in split? I literally yelled, anyone going to be in split in a very German accent. So then I'm like, I shit you not. I'm sitting at this table. Okay. And I'm just goofing. I'm like, either we're going to get rejected to go down to the patio level with all the cool kids. So I'm just fucking around. I'm like, listen, you want me to level up? You want me to show you that I deserve to be at the surf lodge? Then fucking let's go. So these girls on both sides of us start laughing. And I think Tina got up to go to the bathroom. So now it was just two of us. It was like, just maybe Jeff and I sitting. No, everybody got up to go to the bathroom. So it's just Jeff and I sitting and the sweet girl to my left hand side taps me on the shoulder. And I turned to her and she's fully cross-eyed. You know what I mean? We're like, not when you're drinking and you're cross-eyed, it was like fully cross-eyed. And she's like, so how do we get in? Like, how do we get into the club part? <laughs> just, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking if I can't get in with agents calling with a light Google search that'll say sold out Radio City, bitch, you better put on some sunglasses. But she was tiny. She was cute. She had a hot body. But I'm like, bitch, you ain't getting in. You got to cover them eyes. You know what I mean? And that's no disrespect to anybody who's got a wonky eye. But you know that there's nothing that's going to deter a cunty woman who's got a clipboard from letting you behind the fisherman's rope. than if you, you know, you got a you got a wandering eye Um, because it makes everybody not know which where to look. And the rule of thumb is, is I think you just look at the bridge of the nose or you just pick one eye and you fully commit. You fully commit. So I told her, I made a joke. I said, ma'am, I don't really know the trick or the trade because I just announced to everybody here that I am I'm able to afford a boat, not a peak season boat, because that's outrageous, but an off season boat where the waters are cool. The waters are cool in the morning, warm in the afternoon. But definitely if you, you know, mayday, mayday, God forbid, in the evening hours, it's going to be pretty chilly. And she said, I understand. And I said, just keep the sunglasses on. I literally think I said, keep the sunglasses on. And then I made, of course, an uncomfortable joke that made all the thin women around me very uncomfortable. I said, I'm pretty sure if you have a BMI over 20, they make you walk the plank at the surf lodge and into the pond. And they all laughed. And the German girls were like, <laughs> yes, that's actually what happens. 
Yes, are you size 12, 14? Forget it. You walk the plank at the surf lodge. You walk the plank at the surf lodge. Um, so... I think one of my only saving graces is I walk back up to the front. So after you're done with the meal, they're basically like, get out. Like you can't go be with the cool people on the patio if you don't have a wristband. So I go back out and Tina, of course, is texting my agent. She's like, you should be on the list. Da, da, da. And but we had to be on like a certain specific like brand list or some shit. So then that young intern shows up. She's shaking in her boots. I'm like, listen, I don't give a shit. I'm just having to prove to everybody that I can be fucking fun. Okay. I'm 36. I'm on a steroid pack and I'm fun. I'm fun. Did you know I'm fun? And all the German girls are like, we swear she's fun. She got a boat in Croatia. It's in September. It's off peak hours. It's not the peak hours because you know, the peak season is very too expensive. We know, we know. But she is chubby. Check and see if they allow what the allotment for chubby girls is at this place. Maybe there's one chubby girl that allow into this place. So I walk back up and this intern's like, I promise. And I don't mean to say intern. Like, I, I think the girl was, had come off from being off break. And so I walk back up to the main girl. And the other girl's like, no, no, Heather, I, I know who you are. I swear you're on a list. And the other girl's like, she's not on the list. And she goes, no, I just printed out the new one for tonight. And she's like, ugh, you're on the list. Literally, ugh an audible like an, like if you go if you're at the grocery store and you're going through a pack of strawberries and you see one that's moldy you audibly go ugh ugh well not gonna get this pack that is the noise that the woman made who was standing behind the fisherman woven rope and I screamed absolutely not absolutely not and she was like, what's going on? Fine, we'll get you in. And she's putting the wristband on my wrist. I said, absolutely not. Is the name of the yacht, the yacht, the two person yacht that I bought. Actually, I'm renting. Actually, we're just, we're not even, we're renting it just for five days. I didn't even do a seven day charter because that was still outrageous. But I, I need you to know, ma'am, that I am renting a boat and will put my own, you know, kiss seal of approval on it and bring my own flag to fly um, in Croatia this season in September. But, you know, it's it's not it's not high season. It's it's not peak season. It's mid season to low season. So that's how it's affordable. And this woman's like, walk the fuck away. She literally looked at me and kind of gave me this look. She's like, you need to walk away. And I felt like the dirty, moldy strawberry at the bottom of the pack. The ugh, I don't want to let th these hoes into the club. But let me tell you something, once that wristband, once that wristband at that club hit, once it locked into this thin ass wrist and I walked down on that patio, that party patio, and I had about three girls recognize who I was. And they're like, Heather, let's fucking go. And I was like, get your vapes out. But remember, popcorn lung is a real thing. And you've got to make sure, you know, you check yourself. <laughs> And never accept a drink from a stranger because it could be roofied. But let's fucking go. It was then it was on. And I lasted 45 minutes because I actually had to be responsible and take my mom to dinner that night. I was getting texts while I'm in Surf Lodge. My mom is texting me from the house we rented in the Hamptons. She goes, what time is dinner? What time are you taking me to dinner? So Jeff and I left the kids. We left the kids at the club to have a great fucking time. And we took Robin because I'm a wonderful daughter, took her ass to dinner. And we picked up a bunch of pizzas for the kids and we came back around 11 and they were lit. They were drunk and they had a great time. But I saw people there. The wildest thing happened though. So, you know, I love a party sake. I love a vacation sake. So Raymond, this young girl, these were all like young millennial, no, no Gen Zers. They're hitting the vapes. So one girl's like, do you want to hit in my vape? And I said, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I had a little tickle in the throat. You know, I've got that post nasal drip. I'm good. <laughs> The girl goes, okay, I got regular cigs. I pass one on to another friend of mine who goes to light a cigarette. And this young girl looks at me and she goes, what's he going to light that with? And then this other girl pulls out matches. She strikes a match. He starts to light the cigarette with a match. And she said, what did those do? And I looked at this young girl and I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 23. And I said, have you never used matches before? And she said, no, I vape. And I said, sweetheart, when you smoke a cigarette, you can use a regular lighter, like one that's got a crink, 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 you know what I mean? A little crunch to it. Or you can just light it with a match. But you're so used to plugging in the USB, the USC cord. You don't even know, bitch, that you can start a fire with a goddamn match. So I had one of those moments as I had ordered my third spicy margarita, knowing full well that it was going to make me very ill in my esophagus. And I looked at this young girl and I go, sweetie, you don't even know. 
You don't even know that you can light a match. You can light a cigarette with a match. And I said, have you ever done maybe an online masterclass of survival or preparation? Prepping? Do you know how to start a fire? What are the three? Th- then I start quizzing her. What are the three things you need? God forbid you survive like a plane crash and you're in the woods. And she's like, mezcal. And I go, no, that's a- absolutely not. And then I said, shelter, fire, and a signal. Now, most people think it's food and water. You can survive, I think, two weeks without water, 30 days without food. I said, your first thing is you want a signal to get the fuck out of there. You, you, you want to you go, you want to go, but you need shelter for the night. You need signaling and what was it? Shelter, safety, and maybe, I don't know, a nicotine patch because you're all addicted to these goddamn vapes. I never experienced anything like it. I saw, looked this young woman dead ass in her eyes and she said, what's, how's he going to like that? And then we pulled out matches and she went, how's that going to work? I was like, how did we get here? How did we get here? Maybe I'll start a thing. Maybe I'll start a thing for like uh, young, the younger generation where I can show you guys what we used to do at parties. You know, how a digital camera works, uh, how to light a cigarette, um, you know, what to do, how to build a bong out of an apple. Uh, what else? I mean, I know you guys take the gummies. People barely even smoke the weeds. Um, what else could you learn? How to hide a Zima or a, uh, you know, any sort of, Zimas are really it. If you don't know what a Zima is, live your life. Uh, Smirnoff ice and a pair of Jinkos. Uh, you know, I never shoplifted from bed, uh, Bath and Body Works, but I had plenty of friends who did. And I'm, I've never been a shoplifting kind of gal. It's not been my thing. I don't get a rush from it. I get very rashy and itchy from it. And I use, I never hung out with the shoplifting kids. But, you know, there was always one one girl in every group and her name is Cassie. And she knew how to get the sugar vanilla, warm sugar vanilla from Bath and Body Works. And she would shoplift it every time and somehow get a candle out like a full giant round candle. And I would say, I don't know where you put that up. You know what I mean? I don't know where that went, but I'm not going to ask questions. And she's like, it's in the bottom of my coach purse. And I'd said, you know what? I should have seen that coming. So anyways, I feel like there's a lot I could teach the generation and the younger generation is helping me stay cool. Now on last week's episode, I had my dear friend, Cammie on, um, who owns show me your moo moo. And we were giggling about how we were trying to meet this girl, Zandra. Now, just putting things in perspective. The only thing you need to know about Zandra is she and Alex Earl are like the Queens of like hot Miami university of Miami, TikTok. They do get ready with me. They show you the day in the life, what it's like to be young and cool and hip. Um, I met her, I met Zandra, I met Alex Earl. And let me tell you what, Xandra came up to me and she said, I love the videos. So funny. You're a blast. I said, let's do some brand deals together. I'm pitching. I got a full pitch deck. I basically should have brought an old PowerPoint, uh, like an old Dell desktop and set it up on the power party patio because I was ready to give this girl a full a life lesson on how to be, you know, how to be a millennial, a zillennial, and also wanted just to teach her how to have the ways of the world. And all I did, as I told Xander, I said, listen, I think you're a bad bitch. I think you're doing great. And you really remind me of what I did years ago with these insane videos. You've re-inspired me, reinvigorated me to be so fucking stupid on the internet again. Not like I quit, but you know, mama got busy for a minute, but this is the summer of fun. Summer of fun. I'm having fun, damn it. And she said, is it, you're holding your ears. Is it too loud here? And I go, it's a little loud a little loud. Oh, but one of the things, ding, 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 that I'm going to learn this summer is uh, DJing. So Zandra, the cool girl, Zandy, as I call her, uh, she DJs and she said she could show me how to DJ. So I'm hoping to hit some nightclubs. I'm hoping to do, you know, a private set, a private DJ set that I will learn from scratch for my husband for his birthday this September on the yacht in Croatia. Uh, when I say yacht, catamaran, a small sailboat uh, that we will be on hopefully for his 36th birthday. So you can't tell me I'm not fun. I'm not fun in the sun. I'm not fun on the patty party patio. And I'm not fun with young, young saying I'm fun with young, young kids doesn't sound great. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, you can't tell me I'm not fun with the, with the cool gals. So anyways, ding, ding, ding. Um, I'm going to learn how to DJ. And these girls are great. 
You know what I mean? I find funny stuff on the internet. People say about, you know, some of these TikTok stars. I'm like, listen, I met them in person. Xandra and Alex Earl couldn't have been nicer. Their crews were great. Xandra's boyfriend was a doll. Everybody was lovely. Everybody was lovely, funny, got it, was in on it, figured it out, knew what was up, highly intelligent, and uh, couldn't have had a better experience. So anyways, Xandra, Alex Earl, any of my girls, you're all welcome to come on the podcast. I would love to talk to you about how I can be cooler and fun for summer. Okay, listen, uh, I'm excited to get into the hotline, uh, the absolutely not line. I'm wearing my absolutely not hat. This is cute. Absolutely not K-N-O-T, my captain hat. So let's get into the voicemails because I know you guys have been dying to call in with the, the craziest shit. So let's get into it. Okay, my computer's frozen. Okay, come on, work here. Okay, let's see. I'm sweating. I'm sweating so bad. All right. Da, 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 da. All right. Hi, Heather. I'm just a 24 year old girly living in New York trying to manage all the hustle and bustle, and I have an absolutely not for you. So recently I went to the gyno, you know, regular checkup. We love that. Near. Every woman's got to do it, right? Right. I'm in there, they're making me wait a lot. I'm like, come on. I get in there, finally ready to go for the big metal, big, big metal clampers, you know? Right. So the doctor comes in and says, hey, do you mind if a student comes in? And I say, not at all for the sake of science. Bring them on in. <laughs> But I was a girl, you know, as you would think, nope, a guy shows up. Mm. So it obviously is already awkward, gets in there, I'm like, whatever, a guy. Yeah. She asks, are you sure you don't mind again if he, you know, does a procedure? I say, you know what, I need some good karma. Go ahead, let him get his hands dirty. And Ooh. then he stops the doctor and says, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure. You do know we went to elementary school together. I went red. I am taken back. I go, Let's say his name is Jack. I go, Jack? He's like, oh, my God, Colleen, how are you? And everything. And then, of course, I let him do it. All in there. I was shook. I couldn't say no. We were already in there. So absolutely not for going to the guy now with a schoolmate from elementary school. Bye-bye. Wow. Okay, Colleen, I got to say, this is at the top of the list of some of the greatest voicemails I've ever gotten. Now, listen, I love that you said in the name of science, of course, come on in. The more, the merrier. You know, I hope that you glove up and get a hand up this puss. You know what I mean? I'm hoping that we can go back to the Mayo Clinic and say, things look great, you know, or we can say, hey, this will save a life. I don't know. I'm hoping that at some point, you know, I get a couple people looking in the badge to just, you know, give me the old thumbs up. Two thumbs up is better than one thumbs up. You know what I mean? Um, but I love, I love that he, rec I love that he recognized you and you're, and then you took a second and you said, Jack, how are you at that point? Lean in, lean in. I don't know if, you know, hopefully this may have sparked a little romance afterwards. And I gotta be honest with you, you know, guys will never understand it, I guess, cause they get their prostate checked every now and then, but there is nothing more vulnerable for a woman than being at the gyno. And I don't mean in a like predator way or anything like that. Like, obviously, hopefully we're all working with very, very, uh, you know, medical professionals, but there's just something where you got, they tell you to scoot to the end. Any girl, any gal who's ever gone to your pap smear, you know, you go in there and even though you've, you've washed your vagina six times and, you know, they always ask you if you want to go to the bathroom beforehand because you got to usually got to give a urine sample. They're just checking all the old urine and I'll take like 65 wipes. You know what I mean? I got my mega babe wipes. I got my, all of them. And I'm wiping down. I'm wiping down. Even though I showered, I always make sure I go to the guy who after a fresh shower. Cause you just, you get anxious. I don't know how to describe it. Every woman listening to this knows like you just feel like that doctor's going to come in there and inspect your underwear and just be like, you're a whore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though you shouldn't feel that way, you do feel that way as a woman. So you've already pressure washed your pussy and then you go in and you lay down and then they're all, and they, you know, they make you take, take your clothes off. You just have the little gown on. I always leave my socks on. Your legs are in the stirrups and then they're like, scoot down. 
and they skeet down more. You got to skeet down. And so now your asshole, your full taint is just wide open, just gaping out to the world. And then they stick this silver thing in you that looks like, honestly, like a duck's beak and they pry you open. So I couldn't imagine Colleen being there. And in the name of science, you're allowing this young student to come do what they got to do. And then you realize halfway through, you used to play kickball with the guy. I mean, that's got to be at that point, my vagina, because I have such intense reflexes, cat like would have probably just squeezed the duck, the silver clamp, and it would have shot out across the room. And then, and then, you know, the guy I went to high school with would have been like, yeah, just as how I remember it. And then we both would have lit cigarettes and be like, how are you? Yeah, well, let me tell you what, homecoming. <laughs> I remember. You know what I mean? I feel like if anybody from high school came back into my world in a gynecological way, they'd be like, yeah, I remember this. I sure do. Because, you know, I was not, I didn't sleep with a lot of people in high school. I didn't really, I think, when did I lose my virginity? I think it was like 17. But I, uh, you know what I mean? I let a couple people look up there in the name of science after a homecoming basketball game. You know what I'm saying? But Colleen, good for you for leaning in. Because what are you going to do at that point? You know what I mean? Because when you walk in, it doesn't matter. They're already getting a quick, even though your legs are covered with the little canvas. They're already getting a a little peekaboo of your Pikachu. So I'm glad you leaned in. I'm hoping that maybe, you know, once he made sure you got (laughs) to... You got a clean pap smear. He calls you back for a second date, you know, because at this point you guys are getting married. Game, set, match. I don't care if he's actually already married and in a loving, committed relationship. He just crossed the line and um, well, he's locked up now. Raw. So destroyed his own life there. But I love that. And I love that we were open to that situation and we just went with it. Because you know what? That's a beautiful thing. Let's get to the next voicemail. The Pittsburgh episode. I'm a few weeks behind. That's okay. But I just wanted to say absolutely yes to my dear angel husband. I love it. I said to him on June 23rd, oh my gosh, Heather announced her fall date. We're in Houston, Texas. And he goes, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. Then I see him sitting there on his phone. He gets up. I said, where are you going? He goes, oh, I'm just going to get my debit card. I'm buying tickets to Heather McMahon. And I was like, oh, I'm trying to like play it cool. I'm uh-huh. like, are you uh-huh. the VIP? And he's like, I got the VIP uh, passes too. My man not only cracked off, two tickets to the show. Two? So two VIP. VIP? For the, you know, question and answer at the end. <laughs> yes, my angel husband. Can't wait to see you in I am so happy about this. This is such, I, we needed an absolute yes. After, you know, this woman who's now dating her um, gynecologist, we needed this. We needed an absolute yes. Um, I love that. I love a yes husband. You know what? This is a summer of fun. It's a summer of yes. And to all those little daddies, all those zaddies, those little husbands who think they're locked up. You know what I mean? You might get your woman to bounce on that dong a little bit. If you got her tickets to my show, heatherontour.com. Don't forget it. I didn't mean to say bounce on that dong. I immediately regret saying bounce on that dong. But if you bought her tickets to my show, she might bounce on that dong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm done. Bounce on that dong at Heather on Um, That's great, though. You know what? And I love when a guy this is what we say all the time. And I know I have a lot of male listeners, particularly gay listeners. Shout out. Happy Pride Month. Um but I love if guys do the bare minimum, if you just say, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. If I mention it and Jeff absorbs anything, like, I mean, if, if I mention like, you know what, I'm dying to see the New Jersey housewife reunion. And then he just absorbs it. And later on, he's like, do you want to watch Ted Lasso? Or do you want to watch your Jersey housewife reunion before that? I don't know if you already watched that. Like if he just, if I'm like, you were listening, you were listening to what I was saying. You heard housewives and you didn't tune me out. I will immediately drop to my knees and (laughs) ASMR all over that dong. You know what I mean? I will bounce on that dong Um, because that is what we're asking for. Because I got to listen to Jeff talk about the pressure washing and what he wants to do with the bushes. I mean, this guy thinks he's, you know, he must have a black card at fucking Pike's Nursery. I don't know why we got back from the Hamptons and he saw all the hydrangeas and thinks we need more in our backyard, which I love. I love a little manual labor gardening, you know, I don't know, glow up. But he's out there with the trimmers doing trees. And I just said, what are we doing? 
What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? What do we, where are we, though? He got a bee in his fucking bonnet and he's out there. He's like, yes. I literally go outside and I go, Joffrey, Joffrey, what are you doing? He pulls his ear pods out and he goes, we need more hydrangeas. And then just puts them in. And I just left for the office. I go, OK. But if he were to absorb anything, like I got to listen to him do all this little tinking around and tricks and that, 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 and he bitches about, I don't know. We ran out of eggs, but he's the only one who's cooking the eggs. Like if he just absorbs one tenth of what I say, one tenth, if he were to say, I know you wanted to watch the New Jersey reunion, but I don't even know if you did. I'm already horny nipples hard. I'm like, you were paying attention. You were paying attention. You know what I'm saying? And I'm coming with a, a steroid pack. I got a steroid shot in the butt. Do you know what I can do? I can bounce on that dong. You know what I mean? Bounce on that dong. Um, I'm sweating. I fully sweat through this beautiful new top from Show Me Your Moon Mail. Fully sweat. But I'm ready to bounce on that dong. Um, I will wear my captain's hat as well. Uh, but I'm ready. You know what I mean? If you absorb, if you say, oh God, you know what I've been craving? I have been freaking, I haven't had chicken tikka masala in a minute. And then just later on that evening, when, when you guys play that horrible game that all, all married people play, which is what are we going to get for dinner? If he even just says like, you mentioned tikka masala, I'm not really in an Indian food vibe because you know, that curry really, you know, it, it's a little too hot for me, but what do you think? Can we, can we compromise on Mexican? And you're like, you listen, you listen. I love you. And I'm going to bounce on that dong. It doesn't take a lot. Like, I, it's so funny to me, the argument when men are like, oh, women are nagging or complaining. You ask any woman, the last thing they ever want to do is nag. The last thing they ever want to do is nag. N nobody wants to nag. Nobody wants to be like, Joffrey, 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 Mark, Calvin, Calvin, Matt, e Isaac, Ian, Elijah. Now I'm just naming biblical names. No woman wants to constantly be bitching. No woman wants to constantly be begging, please listen to me. So if you mention one thing, I literally will put my hand on, on Jeff's heart and I'm like, babe, you were listening? And he's just like, yeah, I listen all the time. I go, you don't. But he now, I think, knows in order for me to bounce on that dong, he's got to pretend to listen and just absorb one thing, one thing, one thing. You know what I mean? It could be anything. It could be me. <laughs> Saying, you know what, when we get to Croatia, there's this one restaurant I want to go to. You know, I hear they have good wine. He could literally say, he could, oh, it's a chance. I think we should drink some wine on our trip. <laughs> like, not even specifically wine. I think, I've heard they have really good alcohol in Croatia. Do you think we should drink some? Looking forward to our trip. And I will bounce on that dong. It's not hard to please a woman. Listen to one thing. I heard you like alcoholic beverages on boats, off peak off mid-season boats, and I will bounce on that dog. So to all the husbands listening who love a deep eye roll, oh, here we go. The women are nagging. Listen to one thing. That's all we're asking. And to all the gay guy couples out there, good luck to you. You guys are just both highly successful because you don't listen to either of each other. And you just do your own thing. You know, we were laughing, though. And, you know, I don't shit on the dudes. I really don't. OK, I'm here. I'm here for the hotline. I love when the guys call in. But there's some things that we got to address because I, I'm also a woman and I speak from my point of view, my perspective. But we were laughing. We're out, out at the Hamptons and I'm with some of my gay guy friends. And I'm with a couple of my girlfriends who are single and we were laughing. We were like, what is the common denominator? Because I hear all my gay guy friends bitch about dudes. I hear all my single gals bitch about dudes. I said, the common denominator is men, period. It's not. It, it, the gay guys are having a hard time. Straight girls are having a hard time. Lesbians are the only ones who are just, you know, sitting on the back porch, drinking a nice glass of brandy, listening to Brandy Carlisle. And working on a crossword. You know what I mean? They listen. If I had another woman in my life, well, I do Tina, but if I had another, you know, if I was ever in a domestic partnership with a woman, all we would do is hold hands and listen to each other all day. What was that peanut butter? I'm ordering it on Instacart because I know my little girl, not little girl, because I know my baby loves peanut butter. You know what I mean? I don't know how to, I already know how to, don't know how to talk to a woman, but I'll figure it out. 
But we were laughing. We were high as a kite on edibles the other night. And we were dying laughing because it's like the gay guys are bitching about the guys. And so are the women. So the common denominator is, guys, if you want us to be fun for the summer, if you want us to bounce on that dong, you got to get y'all shit together. It cannot be a one way street. You come for me. I come for you. And we bounce on that dong. OK, I think that's fair enough. Capiche? Capiche. Let's get to the next voicemail. Hi, Heather. Um, I live in New York. I will stay anonymous. Um, just reaching out with a few, absolutely not. So I am infuriated right now. Just got Oof. a yoga class, which was supposed to calm me down, but it just got me pissed. Um, so absolutely not to your ex-boyfriend and you buying a house together and then you being like, well, you need to leave. And then I'm saying, no, I'm not going to leave. So you pay him out 10 grand. And then this morning you wake up to him getting dropped off by some older woman at 7.30 a.m. before your teaching class. Absolutely not. I just, you know, you try to be nice, but there's no point in being nice. All right. Love you. Bye. Okay. Wait a minute. First of all, I, I got to be honest with you. I think buying the house with no sort of uh, legal bind, it was probably a little tricky. And I know I'm going to sound a little uh, old school saying that, but you know what I mean? I feel like sometimes when you're locked up with the ring, it, it, you know, it's, ugh, you know, fuck it, whatever. It's 2023. You bought the house with your boyfriend. You get there. I don't understand what happened. Something clearly was brewing before you bought the house because you don't just buy a house and then all of a sudden you break up. OK, so what was going on behind the scenes? We need a little we need a little back work, if you will. So you break up, you buy him out. So you, you paid him the 10K. And Yama, time to go, or wherever at Archie. And then um, he's still showing up at the crib. So if you bought him out, he should no longer have keys to the house, right? He should have a new place. 10K, that's easy. That's down payment for a nice apartment in New York, that, 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 whatever. I don't know what kind of deal y'all had, but if you're buying him out, it's, it's a wrap. We're putting the shit in a trash bag, you know, put it on the end of a stick, and we're walking down the railroad tracks. It's time to go. But if he shows up the next day while you're on your way to go teach um, and he has a, you know, an older gal, an older gal dropping him off one. How do we know it's not an aunt? You know, how do we know it is not a, an older relative? Um, yeah, I hope he's not having a, any sort of love making with an older relative. But I'm just saying, how do we know it was immediately sexual? Now, if you feel, if you're like, now nah, this is a walk of shame, he's getting dropped off by an older woman. Listen, listen, I'm never, I, I think age is a number. I think love is a number. Love is love. But have you ever thought, you know, maybe one of the reasons you broke up is because there was a little bit of a mommy issue there. You know what I mean? Maybe he, was knocking boots with the old broad at the end of the bar in Brooklyn because he's struggling with his own thing. You know what I mean? Mother's Day was a shit show. So he found a woman who was adjacent in age. And I don't know, you know, want to knock boots with an old broad. I'm looking for the answers and I don't know if I have them right now. I'm hoping it was just a, a kind aunt who found him wandering the streets while he was yelling out your name. You know what I mean? Michelle, Michelle, I love you. I messed up. I'll give you the 10K back. Most likely, though, this was an older random woman that he sucked face with all night. And then he probably woke up on her couch once he realized it smelled like deep cigarettes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you know, this woman probably had a chihuahua or some sort of multi poo. And, um, and you know, she's a little road hard, put away wet, <coughs> but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it was an aunt that found him wandering the streets. He got a call from one of his buddies. Hey, aunt Linda, you know, Tyler's not doing well. He really misses Michelle. He's standing outside Brooklyn bowl right now, just screaming her name. Can you come get him? Cause we don't want to leave the party. I'm hoping that that's what happened, but most likely, most likely he made love to an older woman. And maybe he needed to get that out of the system. And honestly, shouldn't he feel better about that? Like, put, put the shoe on the other foot. Imagine if he had bought you out of the house and then you were getting dropped off by like a silver fox zaddy. You know what I mean? He's going to be way less pissed, though, if it was like a hot young girl. You know what I mean? She's 24. She's in grad school. Tits still perked up. If he saw you getting dropped off by like, you know, an older dude, maybe in like a denim vest. 
with a bumper sticker that just says like, you know, Darwinism and it's got the fish and the infinity symbol. Like I would be a lot less threatened if I was him. You should not be threatened. If it's an older woman, it was either a relative, an aunt, or he just needed to get it out of his system because, you know, he's got issues. Or maybe he just likes older women. You know, maybe he wanted you to start doing some theater makeup, some old age makeup. I don't know. Go on his computer, see what kind of porn he watches. If he's watching like mature sex, Honestly, I'd sleep well at night because the shit that these guys are into can get weird. It can get weird quick. So if he's just like, you know, rom romantic porn or mature love, you should feel good about that because it could be way fucking worse the other way. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> can you imagine, though, he's sitting in the kitchen in a bay window eating his yogurt, having his little French press coffee and you roll up out of like... <laughs> Out of like a 2012 caddy, you know, a Cadillac SUV with some guy named Carl in a denim vest. You know what I mean? And he's smoking in the morning. Dude, there is nothing. And I and I'm never going to whatever smoke. Do your thing. I don't know how people smoke in New York City when it's hot out in the summer. And they're just baking under the sun. They're standing outside of like a Quiznos just <laughs> Like a blue, there's like a Quiznos, a Bluestone coffee and a Levain cookies and everyone's outside just ripping heaters. I don't know how they do it, but I feel like Carl, the old guy that you will eventually probably have sex with to get back at your ex. I feel like he'll probably do that. And he'll actually have like a good job. There'll be something, there'll be something sketchy with him, but you trust him. And he's got like a beach house in like Rockaway Beach, not the Hamptons, but far Rockaway. Because he used to do art installations, but his dad invented like the chip in the computer. So he's got a lot of money, but he's 47, but he looks 62 because he's been smoking and he used to be in a punk rock band. You know what I mean? So, but like, he's a good, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's got a big dick. Like sometimes you just have to ride that wave, but you should feel a lot better that he rebounded with an older woman as opposed to Alex Earl or Zandra. You know what I mean? That would, that would be heavy. Um, but I'm praying for you. I love you. And please call in next week. 800-213-7503. We'd love an update. We'd love an update. Till I want to know, why is he coming back to your place? Did he feel guilty about it? Did he tell the woman, hey, drop me off in my crib? But really, he, you know, did he see you and then fall into your arms and say like, mommy, I don't know. What, what happened? We need to know. I'm sending you love. I'm sending you light. Heather, it's Madeline from Arkansas. I am pregnant and mm. I'm absolutely not for you that I think most people can find relatable in this society, or maybe it's just me, but absolutely not to these viral videos of talking about like the best pasta ever at these high-end restaurants. And it comes served <laughs> on a plate, but the pasta is shoved up in like a, a big wine glass with like the Parmesan cheese, like on the base of the wine glass like so basically they pick up the wine glass the pasta falls out and then they tip oh yeah the top or the the base of the wine glass with all the parmesan onto the pasta it's like here you go this looks very <laughs> like what the fuck you just shoved the pasta in a wine glass and then put parmesan cheese on the base and brought it out like what makes that so what makes that a delicacy so, like i'm I keep seeing these videos because all I can watch is food videos. Um, otherwise, I spiral and panic and think about the world. Yeah, yeah, same, 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 same. Even food videos are making me freak out now. So absolutely not to presenting pasta like that. I think it's fucking weird. Like, put it in like that cheese hole, you know, like they put yeah, much, the wheel. pasta in that, that big cheese thing. I don't know what it's called, but the I'm cheese wheel, that, but not in a goddamn wine glass. Absolutely not. Love and light. Listen, Madeline, love you. I uh, hope you're feeling well with child. Don't know where you are at in your pregnancy, but I understand the spiral. I do the same. I'm not with child, but every other day it is a, I'm on a, I'm a they're on food TikTok, conspiracy theory TikTok, or like, um, you know, uh, Zillennial trying to be cool TikTok. Get ready with me. Here's the deal. I totally agree with you. I don't know when this became a thing. I don't think these are actually real Italian restaurants. I know what you're talking about. They do the presentation on the TikToks, on the Instagrams. They, it's, it's like, just plate the fucking rigatoni. Play the fusilli, the spicy vodka fusilli. You know what I want to see? I want to see the truffle guy. I want to see Salt Bay come back because we're doing too fucking much. I don't need you to take the pasta with the cream sauce, put it in the wine glass and put it out of the wine glass for the plate presentation. Because you know what I just lost? About 75% of the flavor because the inside of that wine glass has got what in it? Carbonara. And you know what I need? I need that sauce 
on my fucking plate. Okay. I'm with you. If you go to Italy, they don't do any of this shit. Maybe you'll go to a place where they put the pasta and the cheese will, but you also know like uh, that's not a real thing. You know what I mean? I mean, it could be, but it's also not really a real thing. I mean, my favorite thing in the world is cache pepe. It's just cheese, salt and pepper. Okay. And a fuck ton of deliciousness. But you know what I don't need? I don't need you to take my pasta, roll it around in a fucking cheese wheel. And then I don't know, get some sort of asbestos because the bitch before me got buttered noodles. I don't know what y'all are up to. I want it plated. I want you to, I worked in fine dining. I want you to take the nice, the nice napkin. If you're at a place where a chef is, you know what I'm saying? Wiping the edge of the plate and spinning it at a 45 degree angle and then saying hands, I need hands. That's the kind of restaurant I like to go to. I also fuck with an olive garden. I will. Wow. My, my stomach's growling. Sorry. It's the steroids. I'm fucking starving. That's the other thing when you're on steroids. Now I'm fucking hungry. And if you bet your ass, I'm going to text my husband. It is five o'clock. When I get out of here from recording this, if he doesn't have a chicken cutlet and a Greek salad waiting for me, when I get home, if he's still doing hydrangeas, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to really kill him. Um, but I, we're doing too much. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm hot. I got to take off the captain's hat. We're doing too fucking much. We're doing too much. Just just if you go to Italy, it's a small portion. You get three pastas. You can try them all. And that's what I want. I don't need you to put it in a rabbit, rabbit's ass and then squeeze it on the plate. I don't need a magician to come out and, you know, they're like, top of the moon into you. And then they put it in the little hat and they shake it around and they're like, pick a number. And you're like seven. And then they slap you in the face. And the next thing you know, you've got chicken milanese on your plate. I don't need that. All I need is to hear a ding or a hands. I need hands, which anybody who's working a restaurant knows your food's coming. If you're at a restaurant where you can audibly hear that the food is coming, you're at the right fucking place. Doesn't have to be fancy, but you know, that's a chef driven restaurant and not some asshole, you know, who decided to be a restaurant tour. And at the last minute went down to Ikea, bought 75 different goblets to like swirl around some, I don't know. Pasta for Jules. I, uh, what are we doing here? Enough. I saw this one woman on TikTok who would make, it was called like, uh, oh God, what the fuck would you call it? Countertop pasta. She literally put noodles on a raw countertop. Now I'm not talking about making noodles. When you're making fresh pasta noodles, you put the flour out and the egg and you do it all on the countertop. I'm talking cooked spaghetti, threw it on the fucking countertop, then marinara, then whatever cheese and bullshit and everybody ate it off the counter. No, we're not turning pasta into fucking charcuterie boards. We already did butter boards and that made me want to put a gun in my mouth. We're not doing this shit. Okay, enough. Do not disrespect my people that way. You got white woman out here named Melinda with no Italian roots, putting a bunch of pasta in a gravy dish and then telling me it's more. You know what it, it really is? It's a scama. It's a scamming. And I won't stand for it. Me or my people from Sicily. My God. You know what I love, though? If you want to have a little show, bring out the truffles. Da, 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 da. Bring out the little mandolin, the little baby mandolin da, 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 with the white truffles or the black truffles. I don't care. I'm not racist. I love all truffles. You know, I'm inclusive with the truffles. Any truffle, any color, bring it on. Sweet or savory. You know, bring the salt out. Da, 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 da. I don't care. But if you bring me a dish of food that's on another dish that then loses 85% of the flavor because you got to take it from one plate to the next plate, I need the jus. You know what I mean? If I get a tomahawk steak and the sauce isn't either, at least put the sauce in the gravy bowl and then I bop, bop, bop myself. But I don't need you to put a tomahawk steak on a skateboard push it through the room, then have Tony Hawk come do an alley oop and have that thing, bam, hit like a pancake on top of my plate. Just bring it out. I'm the kind of bitch who still loves to see those, that plate of fajita sizzling coming my way. Choo-choo, all aboard the party train. You want to know why? Because I'm fun. And I'm fun for the summer. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I love you. I miss you. I'm so glad to be back in the theater. At the theater. Where am I? The studio. Um, we're going to be cranking out some great episodes. Also, guys, go on YouTube. Go on to YouTube. We're, we're slowly rolling out all the episodes that we've been filming. And we're going to have shorts and reels and all sorts of behind the scenes vlogging. All that stuff's in post-production right now. So we're going to be hitting that soon. So please subscribe. Oh, oh shit. Sorry. Please subscribe. Um, what is my YouTube page? I believe it's The Heather McMahon. Go to The Heather McMahon. And it's going to be all things me, all things in one spot. Um, but make sure you subscribe and like, and I will keep posting everything. Also, get your tickets at heatherontour.com. I just announced and released all the tickets. We're going to, let me read them for you. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Yes, I do. Uno momento. I'm sweating. I'm fully sweating. All right, guys, um, we are starting the tour again. August 19th, we'll be going to Las Vegas then Chicago, Phoenix, San Diego, Orlando, Raleigh, Richmond, Charlotte, Baton Rouge, Jackson, Toronto, St. Louis, Houston, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Los Angeles, and then ending the tour. This the comeback tour with this material about Italy and the wedding and all that shit. We'll be ending it on November 9th and 10th at the very historic Fox theater. And I'll be shooting my second special there. And as soon as this first special, I can tell you guys where it went and where you can see it. I will announce that as well. I really appreciate you guys. Y'all are the freaking best. Thank you for being there for me. And thanks for just making me giggle and all your feedback um, in the DMS and, and emailing me and all that shit has been really, it's tickling me pink. And remember we're fun. We're freaking fun for the summer. We're so fun. Um, I love you. I mean it. I'll see you next week. Arrivederci. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella.